Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Shay Rudolph about the Babysitters Club on Netflix. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. It's exciting. I mean, now two seasons of playing Stacy. What do you like so much about this character specifically? That's an amazing question. I think she is a really headstrong, responsible, very savvy girl. Yeah. Um, I think above all else, she's just very real. I think everybody at a first glance kind of sees her as this like picture perfect teenage girl. Like she has an amazing style. She like does everything. She's great at school. You know, all those things that you kind of want to achieve in your real life, but She's just a very real human. And I think we kind of get to see that a little bit more in season two, where she puts all this pressure on herself to be perfect because, I mean, other people do the same to her. And she's like expecting herself to be able to yeah. do everything and to do it all and to be a superhuman. But she's just a normal teenage girl and she can't handle it all. And you see her kind of crack under that pressure a little bit, which is a very real thing. And I think it's great to see that side of her. So, yeah. 100%. There is a lot going on in season two. There's a lot of storylines, a lot of developments, a lot of new characters. There's, there's a lot happening. For you, when you were kind of reading the script and then actually going in and shooting season two, what was the mindset like for you a little bit with the character? Oh, I think um, it's the same kind of thing with season one. Like, you just kind of go in and you really want to do justice to the character I think especially having these characters exist previously in yep. book and movie and show adaptations in the past um I just really want to make Stacy be the Stacy that everybody else knows and um I think that's like my my main thing that I think about going on to set but the other thing is just making sure that she stays very grounded and real um and that's not too tricky to do seeing as I have a lot of similarities with her so I'm kind of able to just show up and be myself but yeah I think the main thing is just making sure that she stays very accurate to the past adaptations and and all of her friendships stay the same and that her growth is very much so there absolutely one of the cool things about the babysitters club is it is of course on Netflix I mean Netflix has such an amazing reach globally 190 countries have access to watch season two as soon as it came out um it's just is it a really cool feeling to think about whether you talk with your family and friends about how many people actually get to watch you as stacy in the babysitter club like it's pretty crazy it it's really crazy and i think it's still like i don't know if it will ever fully process in my mind that <laughs> there are that many people that watch something that is so close to my heart and and see my portrayal of this incredible character like i just don't know if i'll ever be able to fully wrap my mind around it because it's so cool and so huge and crazy and i'm just like so grateful for it but it's yeah it's taken a while for me to realize that it's like on Netflix. People watch it all the time, but like anytime I'll open up Netflix and see it there. Like I was on a plane coming home from New York yesterday and I, I, I looked over and the person next to me was like scrolling on Netflix and I saw the Babysitter's Club there and I was like, <laughs> oh my God. Okay. This is, this is. Can you imagine if they started cool. watching it? <laughs> that, that, that would have been insane. Yeah. Can you imagine if it was like a Stacy scene and they turn, <laughs> they turn and look at me? They're like, wait, are you? <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure so things like that have happened. I'm sure that has happened to some people. <laughs> that I, it probably has. I don't know if I'll experience it, but I think I'd probably lose my mind a little bit if I absolutely. If I did, yeah. Shea Rudolph is an actor. Another word for that is a storyteller. You are a storyteller. That's what you do. Um, it might be hard maybe to name one thing, but maybe you can list a few. What is your favorite thing about being a storyteller, Shay? Oh my God, that's such a hard question because I definitely do think I'm a storyteller because I'm also a writer. Yep. Um, so it, it kind of applies to many different things, but I think my favorite part is just, this might be a little bit of a typical answer, but being able to write slash portray characters that yeah. other people see themselves in. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't see yourself in a character, you can still experience their life through just reading or watching you're listening to this story which is so incredible because it's like in your real life you're just you you yeah. don't ever get to experience anybody else's life in like the reality of actual life but through storytelling you can and that is 
it's literally a superpower. It's magical. It's incredible. And so being able to be part of that in so many different ways is like so mind blowing to me because being able to hear other people's stories that are real or fictional yeah. is just like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. It's so a- that's my favorite thing yeah do you find because they're saying we're in the golden age of tv film and tele and and content right now is it a tie between kind of what we were talking about but the global access because i think that's a really big thing but also the quality of stories is just amazing is it a tie in terms of the reason why we're in the golden age in your opinion i yeah i think it is i think also just right now um people are so invested in what they're creating i think especially like even people that are my age where where somebody who's a little bit older might be like, oh no, you're like, you're still just a kid. But it's like, everybody is really invested in what they're doing, which is such an admirable trait. But I think that's another reason why, like you were saying, the quality of the stories that we're getting, people really put everything into them. And I think that's something that you see in the Babysitter's Club. Like it was such a passion project for everybody involved because of the books, because it's been part of everybody's childhood who's part of this show. And it's like, I think that, really shows when you watch it so i think i think it's a little bit of everything yeah but that's interesting you mentioned that because that was actually a different a, a question i mean you know you've been you played stacy for two seasons now so you're getting used to it everything i mean you mentioned like they were books um adaptations of books before the show so when you signed on like we're going back to season one now um i'm sure there was pressure because it's always kind of you know an exciting thing and an overwhelming thing to get to a project adapted like that's adapted from something very popular like the book series but i'm sure there was also just a lot of excitement too that maybe overlapped and and got rid of the pressure a little bit right like I'm, it was more i feel like i'm sure it was nerve-wracking but i'm sure the, the excitement i hope was yes took over basically <laughs> it, it actually definitely did take over and i think all of us were kind of able to turn it around and like less focus on the pressure of being like having to get this character right and more so just focusing on the fact that we have so much content in front of us that tells us everything we possibly need to know about playing this character which is like in other in other things that you do in film and tv and anything you have to kind of figure that out on your own like it's up to you to decide what the character is and it's also up to the writers and everybody else who's part of the creation of it but it's like there's a lot more that you don't know about them you have to explore that and i think playing Stacy or any of the other characters in the Babysitter's Club, it's all there. Yeah. It's like you just get to walk right into it, which is one of the most incredible things too because it's just like you just you just have it all there and you get to be able to just really like relax into it and explore in different ways. Absolutely. So. so I do have to ask this. You were all together like for a long time when you're shooting the show, probably some pretty long days on set. You got like you got to tell me. Were there any pranks or anything happening on set? You, there's something you you have to like. You could tell us at least. Like there's got to be something like a prank <laughs> or something that happened. There had to be. <laughs> None of us are really pranksters. I think all of us are are pretty professional on set. But there there are definitely times where it's been a long day. We're all tired. We just want to be. Regular teenagers because we are, and sometimes there will be, this was actually something that did happen. Um, it was one of the last days of filming and we were filming, you know, the fashion show, the fashion show, the fashion show yep. scene at the end of episode three. Um, and there were like the boas and the glasses and crowns and stuff. And we all walked over to the prop room mm-hmm. and they had snacks and pens and stuffed animals and like all of this stuff. And we all just kind of went crazy <laughs> and we were like putting on the glasses and putting on literally everything possible. And I think I actually have a Polaroid of it. I'll, I'll try to find it eventually. <laughs> but we all just kind of went wild. And then we all were able to just like take the stuff back to the green room where our chairs are, where we like hang out in between filming. <laughs> and we were just wild just teenagers and we had so much fun so it's like it's a lot of those little things where it's not like pranks or us being crazy to other people but more so just having fun with each other and just kind of relaxing and really being ourselves which is super fun but that's also an interesting segue to my next question because you mentioned you know being professional on set but at the end of the day you guys are teenagers and everything and i find it interesting because it is overwhelming right like you know you're acting and you're working but you have a like a, another another life basically of like school family yeah. and friends um i'm sure you're getting used to it and you're finding a groove that works for you to balance it um 
do you still find it challenging these days, even though sometimes you're able to kind of balance your schedule? You think you have it. I'm sure it can be a bit stressful sometimes, especially like with premieres yeah. and like press, right? <laughs> yeah, it it is actually, it never really goes away, the kind of stress of having to balance everything. But it's like, it's something that you find in any aspect of life. Like yeah. it, that is always there, balancing personal life and work life and school, if that's applicable. Like it's just, it's always there. You can never really escape it, but it, we always kind of joke. It feels like Hannah Montana. Like you're living <laughs> when I come home, I'm just with my friends. Like I'm just me. I'm with my family, my friends. I go to school I'm like a normal person, but then I go on set and it's like, I'm this actor. I get to play this amazing character. I'm with these other people. I'm in a different city. So it's like, it really does. Feel like Hannah Montana, that's yeah. bringing me back. Jackson Stewart. Oh, man. Rico. That's right. Oh, that's, that's, that's great. That's that's amazing. It's, true, it's very true. And so, yeah, I I think we all have gotten used to balancing it and the stress of it all, but it is still kind of always there. And it can spike at times where you're like, I don't know how I'm going to accomplish everything. Yeah. But we do, and it's okay. Oh, absolutely. Before we wrap up, too, I mean, season two is out now. They could watch it. I mean, they could watch season one and season two. If they haven't watched season one yet, they could binge it all and get caught up with the babysitters club um for this season specifically shay when people get to watch it what are you hoping they get out of it takeaway wise i really hope that people just get to see themselves on screen it's one of the most important things of media in this day and age just being able to see yourself accurately represented on screen and i think it's something that the babysitters club really stands for uh, I think it's pretty noticeable when you're watching it because it's just really all about empowerment and making sure that these characters grow up and feel confident in themselves and have each other to lean on. That's kind of the main message of the show, but it's something that is really important for me. And it's it's why I enjoy playing Stacey so much because I know that people see themselves in her and look up to her a lot. And that's it's one of the best things. It makes me so happy. So I really hope that people can do that when they're watching it for sure well said that's great shay thank you so much for coming on pop alternative i really appreciate it i hope you have an amazing rest of your day absolutely and uh so people can watch season two like we said right now of babysitters club on netflix and where can people follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything um instagram twitter tiktok those are my main ones um it's all so instagram and tiktok are just shay rudolph my name and then twitter is shay g rudolph I think. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well, this has been Pop Turner of YouTube.com slash Pop Turner for previous episodes. Until next time, this is Shay Rudolph and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.